All over the country, black students were talking about affecting change, about the inequalities they had grown up with, about doing something. But no one did. In Greensboro, the four freshmen resolved that it was time to stop talking and start acting. And that feeling became even more pressing after Christmas that year, when Joe McNeil was humiliated at the Richmond bus station on his way back to school. I went to a counter that was reserved for whites only. And uh, they told me they weren't going to serve me, that I needed to go around to a counter in the back. Well, I refused to do that, and I didn't eat. And he came back hot, I mean, really upset about that, and saying, you know, it's time to cut the bull. I mean, let's get down to business. The four freshmen were determined to take action. They crafted a plan that was ingeniously simple, but had the potential to challenge the local customs in a powerful and revolutionary way. They would go to the whites-only lunch counter at Woolworths and ask to be served. Despite its simplicity, their plan was also potentially very dangerous. It was so courageous for them to do this because violence could occur at any moment. And they knew that they too could be brutalized, arrested, or even killed. But they also knew they had to act. McNeil said, how many in favor of doing something? And I said, I certainly am. And one among us said, well, I, um, I don't know. Uh, I think I've got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom first, and then I'll come back. No. Come on, man, you know, I'm very nervous, you know, my kidneys are working on me. And they grabbed me, held me down. We said, hell no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> You're not going any place. And we said, Richmond, are you in? Uh, he said, well, you know, I'll go with the majority. And, and, and Joe and I said, well, we are the majority. And I mean, that's how, that's how it was done. <laughs> 